Welcome back. The Department of Tourism, led by Minister Mamaluku Kubai Gubani, will officially launch the Tourism Equity Fund tomorrow at an event that will be held virtually. The fund was established by the Department of Tourism in partnership with Small Enterprise Finance Agency to deepen transformation in the sector. So for more on this initiative, we're joined by the minister herself, Mamaluku Kubai Gubani. Welcome to our program and thanks for coming through. Thank you for inviting me and looking forward to discussion. All right, take us through this initiative of uh, this uh, fund and what is it that it entails when you talk about deepening transformation in the industry? Um, over time, we've had uh, engagement with the sector, especially when we moved to various provinces. Um, we found that a lot of people were saying to us they're battling, they would want to enter the tourism sector, and they've been battling. But our reports that were based from uh, the council, released by the council responsible for BEE, has been um, quite really, um, you know, worrying, um, with the indication that we are not making any progress in terms of the sector, in terms of transformation. So out of that, there were recommendations that they made um, that we needed to focus on. One of them was to ensure that there's funding available for those who want to enter the sector and make sure that we de-risk some of the um, support that we provide for them. So we decided, we looked at what we can be able to do. We've had uh, what we call Tourism Transformation Fund, which was looking at small businesses in, in terms of expansion. And out of that as well, we found that a lot of people still gave us feedback to say, this is not, um, not really responding to the transformational challenge. The, president's, the president in 2020, during his SONA speech, he announced that the tourism sector, we, as the tourism department, we will launch um, the tourism equity fund, which the president will be leading tomorrow in the launch. This is a fund that we are looking at ensuring that we protect the supply side. We also, in terms of the um, economic reconstruction and recovery plan, we reflect the importance of, as we recover the tourism sector, the importance of ensuring that the supply side remains intact so that those who are visiting our country can still be able to uh, find our supply side of the market intact and being able to enjoy our country. So this is part of that, of ensuring that we also respond in the re recovery of, the, se of uh, the sector, but also as the economic reconstruction talks about reconstructing our economy, we believe that reconstructing the economy has to be inclusive, and that's why the support comes a long way. Um, we are grateful that CIFA came on board, um, also provided quite a number of things that will be announced tomorrow as we do the launch. When you're talking about uh, the, the, the timing of uh, this uh a equity fund one would ask should you be focusing on uh, transformation and those who want to enter the sector whereas when you look at the current problem now is how severely the industry has been affected through uh, lockdown regulations when you look at restaurants and of course uh, guest houses in in KZN we had a big hotel there the Hilton having to shut down so this recovery process how is it going to affect rather to benefit those who have been uh, on the downside of uh, COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic um, we do quite a lot of work so it's various areas that we focus on obviously the recovery of the sector is critical in terms of ensuring that we are able to come back and work effectively. Hence, our paying attention in terms of what is happening in the vaccine side of it, because that's what will literally ensure that we are able to survive fully as, as the sector. And our participation in terms of global platforms to learn what is being done globally in terms of the sector. Now, the importance of this fund and why it's important, you don't say because um, there is a challenge and then you don't find mechanisms of responding to it. One is that it responds to two ways. It responds to the impact of the COVID-19, where you find facilities like that, that were mentioning, for example, that are closing, where people are saying, because that's what we are picking up in the sector as well, that you find people who are saying, um, we have invested, but we are no longer interested in going ahead with what we have as products, and therefore we want to sell. So what we are doing, we are coming on board to support those who are willing to, sell, to to buy 
in terms of the products that exist as well. So in that way, you would have people, for example, if somebody's interested in buying a Hilton hotel in Devon, for example, they will come forth, putting together their package, which will be announcing the criteria tomorrow as well uh, through CIFA, um, putting together the package to say, we are interested in not seeing Hilton closing, and therefore we are able to go in and buy, and as government, we are saying, we would want to support that. But as we support those to revive, to survive, to remain in the sector and remain within our pro as part of our products, we think it's important that we do that in a way that is also inclusive, in a way that we can be able to achieve both our goals of transformation, but also another goal of making sure that the supply, which is your establishment, which is your attractions, are surviving and are tourists when they come to the country, even from abroad and those who are in as domestic market can still find them. So it's pitting one bed with, a, you know, um, a bed with one stone, two beds with one stone, if I can put it in that way. But Minister, don't you think that there will be a problem here in as far as uh, you know, the RSI, uh, RSR uh, approach that you're talking about, that is uh, to uh, recover, uh, survive and remain in the context that there will be lack of consistency if there could be a resurgence in the uh, infection rate and there would be now a need to shut down or rather go to level three or level four in case when you look at your assessment of the predictions of how things can go. How do you think then this will really be consistent if there could be measures that will interrupt the process? Look, remember from government point of view, we've always said that we'll, we'll, we'll work together in, in, in C to protect lives and livelihoods. So our side, our responsibility is to ensure that livelihoods are not completely uh, lost while we're paying attention to lives as well being restored and uh, not being lost. So it's, it's not a contradiction of what we are doing. We are cognizant, that's why I made a reference to say we're paying attention and we are contributing to the discussion around the vaccine. For example, I received a letter from the sector that indicates interest in ensuring that the sector is well set aside money to be able to protect the frontline staff in terms of our, our uh, sector. In terms of whether we go to level five to level four, obviously both wearing my head as Minister of Tourism, but also as Chair of the Economic Cluster. We are paying attention to that. And what we are trying to do is to find mechanism to mitigate against us going to extreme measures of lockdown because we do know what happened when last time we had a high, high level of lockdown in terms of level five. So we would want to continue to work with everybody, ensuring that um, we do not go there. Obviously, it's not only government's responsibility. All of us as South Africans, we have a duty to ensure that we help to make, make sure that we don't see the surgeons, the search, we don't see the, re, the recurring of high numbers. We are able to social distance, we are able to consistently wear our mask, we are able to wash our hands where we do not have sanitizers. And those measures are critical for us to be able to ensure that issue that we are paying attention to is the issue of the vaccine as a said. All right. Well, I think now it seems to be uh, intermittent there, Minister. So uh, I believe that uh, just a minute or two that has been added to our time. I just wanted to ask you about events. Right now we're still having a problem with uh, these uh, tourism facilities, especially for the side of business and events. What, what, what happens now if the element of productivity doesn't come into place because they cannot make the income that they would make if they were operating at full capacity? Just a very brief, briefly, Minister. No, definitely. As I'm saying, the, the restrictions, it's not our ideal for the tourism sector, I must say. Um, that's why even when it was going to happen, I had to urgently call a meeting on the 26th of December with the sector to alert them that there is a concern by um, the health ministry together with um, our, our government in terms of what we were seeing as events that were spreading. And this was, was mainly, if we can just be quite frank, irresponsible behavior by citizens. So if we can, all of us, 
be responsible. Remember that if you do a party where people are not wearing masks and people are having alcohol, not social distancing, where you end up with thousands of people being infected in one area, illegal gatherings that are happening, in-house parties, you know, those are some of the things that are causing the spread. People need to understand you are impacting on us negatively. You are, in a sense, closing our businesses as the tourism. You are making us unemployed as members of the tourism sector. And my appeal to South Africans is that please help us save the tourism sector. Please help us save the jobs in the sector by being responsible, by not doing what is not supposed to be done. In that way, I think we will be able to win this battle. Many of our subsectors are not yet in business. Many of them are losing their businesses. Many of them have lost their investment that they've put. Many are not able to put food on the table as we speak. And for them to be able to recover and come back, they need all of us to act responsibly so that the numbers we are seeing in the hospitals can go down. In that way, then, we will be able to win the battle of saying, can we go back to level one within the discussions we are having in cabinet? Thank you. All right, Minister, I hope that uh, it's an appointment for tomorrow as we'll hear more about the fund from you and the president. Thank you so much for making time to speak to us.